Good morning and welcome to Wednesday's Word. Um, on behalf of Pastor Hunter and to, to God be the glory, just want to thank you for joining me again for another Wednesday's Word, a dive into the Bible. This morning I'm going to talk about one scripture in particular briefly to just kickstart your morning off. And it's James chapter 1 in verse 17. And it reads, good and perfect gift, every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and coming down from the Father of life, with whom is no verbalness, neither shadow of turning. This scripture was written by James, the brother, the half-brother of Jesus. And one thing he was talking about was the who God is and the characteristics of God. And so when we look at the scripture, just briefly, there's two things that I want to bring out. One, he talks about the gifts that God gives. And there's two gifts in particular. He says every good gift and every perfect gift. And so when we look at those two, they both symbolize are both symbolic of God's goodness and his benevolence and his love to us. It characterizes God. It emphasizes God's characteristics of giving and who he is. And one of the scriptures that really stuck out to me is the scripture that says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. So it shows that God is a giving God and the perfect gift is that of completeness. When God gave his son for us to die on the cross, it was completed. There was no other offering. There was no other sacrifice that needed to be Given. So when we talk about that complete gift, it's a gift that fulfills all things. And there's no uh, lack. There's no want. There's no need. It is, is complete in its fullness. And so when we look at that, the word gift in the Greek is doro. And it means an act of giving. An uh, act of giving. And it's when you think about giving your thoughtfulness to give someone something, the thought that you thought about me and the meaning is enacted as a gift that you are actually giving to someone else. So when we see this verse, it's letting us know that all gifts come from God. Everything that we have, everything that we receive, everything that we gain, everything that we're, every ability, every skill, Every gift that we have, everything we have, comes from God. And those gifts that he gives are perfect and they are good. He gave them and he gives us exactly what we need, how we need it. He gives those gifts specifically for you. So we want to. I want you to know that God has tailored those gifts for you and they come from him. Enjoy by you. Now, some people will think, you know, uh, why is bad things happening? If God gives good gifts, why are bad things happening? But know this, that God cannot tempt you with evil, but God is good. All that he does, it is good. So when we look at even the bad things that happen in our lives, God is working those things for good. Those are that God gives one of the things, one of the scriptures that I'm reminded of is in Luke chapter 11 and 13. And it says, if you've been evil, know how to give good gifts. How much more will your heavenly father, and I'm paraphrasing this, how much more will your heavenly father uh, be able to give unto you if you ask him? See, God's gifts are good. All that he does is good. God's gifts are good. Um, no matter how you look at it, no matter what you like, it's good. Even the bad, it works for the good because God is good. And remember, I was telling you, James was sharing with us the attributes or the characteristics of who, who God is, his nature and who he is. And so I want you to know today that God is good in everything. There's hundreds of scriptures that talk about God's goodness. In Psalms chapter 145, it says, the Lord is good to all, and his mercy is all over uh, everything that he's made. Psalms 34 and 8 says, Oh, taste and see that the Lord, he is good. Psalms 107 says, Thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. His steadfastness and his love endures forever. 
um, in that same chapter, verse uh, one, same chapter one o seven, verses eight and nine. All that men will give thanks to the Lord for His goodness and for His wonderful works to the children of man. He for He satisfied the longing soul and He fills the hungry soul with goodness. All that God exhibits is goodness. Uh, First Chronicles says, Oh, taste and see. Again, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Um, Psalms 25 says, uh, The Lord is good and upright is the Lord. Uh, Psalms 33 and 5 says, he, lo he loves righteousness and justice, and the earth is full of his goodness. There are several scriptures that talk about the goodness of God good God. And if God is good, that character of goodness is going to come through everything he does. And the one thing I like and what James was letting us know is that there's no verbalness in God, meaning there's no changing in God. So he's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. He's the same God over 2,000 years ago. He's the same God in Genesis that created the world when he said, the, the these good gifts come from the Father of lights. He is the one that created all things. All things were made by him. And so when we see that, that all that he does, it is good. Nehemiah 1 and 7 said, The Lord is good, a stronghold in the day of trouble, and he knows those who trust in him. Even the sorrows, even the persecutions, you know, all of that works together for blessings. All those work together to bless us. This uh, precious assurance that we have is limited to a certain group. And Romans lets us know, if you want to see that all things that are happening in your life are working for your good, that are adding blessings for you, he gave in Romans two uh, two descriptions of those people that that, and one it says that um, those that that love the Lord, those that love Him. If you love God, God is gonna give those good gifts, even the things that the devil meant for your bad. God's gonna turn it for your good. He's gonna allow it to happen for your benefit, not for your destruction. And so it says, but all those that love the Lord and the call according to his purpose. The group of people that he's talking about, the children of God that are going to enjoy that blessed assurance are those that love him. Those that love him. If you love him, the scripture says, you will keep his commandments. Those that are keeping his commandments. Those that are following his word. You know, when I think about the expression of them that love God, it's synonymous with the followers of God, the followers of Christ. Because if you love Christ, you follow Christ. If you love him, you're going to follow him. And if you're following him, you're going to keep his commandments. You're going to keep his word. You're going to obey what he says and what he's uh, uh, called for us to do. And then he talks about the call. And the called are those that have heard the gospel and have responded and have accepted and responded. And we're living in a, 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 a life. We're living a life of obedience. So when we think about you want the good, the good gifts of God, you want everything to be good. You want is, is you have to be called. You have to love the Lord. So uh, I just wanted to share with you is that everything that God has in your life it is good. So what if you want to receive the good gifts of God, you have to keep his commandments. You have to follow him. So when I look at James and what he was talking about earlier in this chapter in verse two, he talks about uh, telling us to count it all joy, 
because God's working it for you good. Have you ever lost, been on a job and got fired? Only to receive a better job or a job that pays more. Have you ever, uh, and you had that job only because you, you got fired from the other job. If you wouldn't have got fired, you wouldn't apply for the other job. All things work together for the good. Have you ever lost some money only to find that somebody was, uh, you won something on the other end? Even though you thought it was bad, God turned around and he worked it for your good. All things work together for the good. All the gifts, everything in your life, it comes from God. God's the father of lights. He created all things. All things are in his control. He's the one that owns everything. When we see in Genesis, it talks about, you know, the earth was void and without form. In Psalms 33 and 9, it says, For he spake and it was done, and he commanded and it stood fast. You know, it's, it's something that there's God's in control of everything. It doesn't matter what it is. God is in control of it all. So even whatever happens, God is in control. It doesn't take him a surprise. And so when we look at even God had asked Satan in Job chapter 1, verses 7 through 10, he said, Whence thou cometh? And the Satan answered, uh, the Lord has said, from going to and from in the earth and walking up and down it. And the Lord said, Has thou considered my servant Job? There is none like him in the earth, a perfect and upright man, one that feareth and eschewed evil. And so when we look at the fact that even the things that came to Job, God was working it really for Job's good. We know the end of Job's story, but it wasn't something. that when we want to know how do I overcome these struggles, how do I overcome these difficulties, how do I make it through, James goes on to let us know in today's word, we have to be like Jesus. And what what we and when I mean when I say be like Jesus is we have to be unchangeable, unmovable. But when we look at what James said, he said there was no verbalness or shadow of turning. He was saying that God doesn't change. He's not fickle. He's not on one day and off the next day. He's not happy today and sad the next day. He's not you he's not preaching, you know, we're not preaching uh, Jesus one day and then the next day we're denying who he is. We're not speaking the word and teaching the gospel and then out of the same mouth we're not cursing God or we're not cursing it says the scripture came to my mind just now is that uh, bitter and, and sweet and not flow from the same fountain. We're not one day encouraging somebody and the next day we're talking about them. You know, telling of goodness and then complaining about our life. God doesn't change. There's no verbalness in him. I'm reminded of a scripture that says God's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. All that he does, he's the same. He's the same God that it was with Daniel in the lion's den who shut up the mouths of the lion. He can shut up the mouths of those that are hating on you or those that are speaking evil against you. He's the same God that was with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the faraway furnace. He's the same God with us today. And because of that and because he's the same God, we, we, he, because he changes not, what he says, we can count on it. We can believe it and we can take it into the bank. We have to be the same way Jesus says. There's a scripture that says we should be instant, in season and out. It doesn't matter whether it's good or bad. We should be the same. We should praise God because he's not going to change. He's not going to stop being who he is. He's not going to cut our ear off because we are... Uh, didn't pay our tithes. 
He's not going to cut our air off because we don't pay our tithes like lg and is going to cut your electric off when you don't pay your bill. He's not going to stop providing for us like we stop helping people when they do us wrong or they talk about us. God doesn't change. What he has is good. Everything he does is good. I'm reminded of, you know, Moses and when he saw Jesus and what he saw. God never ceased being who he is. Even when he came down from the throne and came to earth, he never ceased being who he was. He never ceased being merciful. He never ceased being faithful, long-suffering, kind, gentle. There's a song that says he's a way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. God, that is who he is. That is who God is. He's the same, always, never changing. But I like even what Moses said, because a lot of times we try to gravitate on all the good, but it also lets us know that he's forgiving iniquity and transgressions and sins. And that is by no means clear the guilty. And what he's saying is that God is all those things, but he can also be have anger. He can also have vengeance. He can also, uh, he also has ordained that there's things that's going to happen to those that don't believe and those that don't follow his commandments, those that don't love him, that are, they're, they're, they're going to happen. And I had to say that, add that, because as I'm talking about the goodness of God, I want to also express the sovereignty of God, that he's able to do what he wants, when he wants, and how he wants. And, and if we don't keep his word, because some people think, well, if God is so good, then I can live in sin and God's going to forgive me. Or I can continue to do wrong and, and, and there's no punishment, that there's no recourse that's going to come behind that. But God is letting us know that there is recourse. At one time, he winked at sin. But because of his goodness and because of the fact that he hung, bled, and died on the cross and he gave us, there was one scripture that I didn't read, but he gave us his spirit in us. He gave us the goodness of his spirit in us that we can keep his commandments, that we can love him with all of our heart, mind, and soul. He gave us that, that we could be steadfast, you know, through it all, that we can exude the goodness of God through our lives. He gave that to us so that we'd have no more excuses. So I just wanted to share that he's good and he doesn't change. He's unchanging. Even in the world today, he's the same even in a world that changes every day. Our seasons, they change. We have summer, winter, fall, and spring, and sometimes we don't even know which is which because in the in the summertime I've seen people wearing shorts. In the in the wintertime, I've seen people wearing shorts. But our seasons, they change. Our health, it changes. You know, our our physique and our outward appearance, it changes. Our emotions change. We one day we're feeling good and the next day we're, we're not as happy as what we were. We don't understand. Our relationship with people changes. Our finances changes. Everything around us is always changing. But God, God never changes. There's no variance in him. There, he never turns. He never turns or changes. You can count on God to do just what he said and what he says. Can I count on you? Can your church count on you when it opens back up? Can lost souls in your office sit next to you, can they count on you? That homeless person that's in the street, can they count on you? That enemy that may be broken to your home, can they count on you? That person that lied on you, can they count on you to be the same? That spouse that cheated on you, can they count on you to be the same? To be the same to pray for them through it all, whatever happens. Can they, can they count on you to be the one that's going to say something positive when everything else around seems negative? Can they count on you? God never changes. It never ceases. Who God is is who he is. He's good all the time, and all the time, God is good. No matter what happens, God is good. 
He never changes. We have to be like him, that we don't change. We don't give up when things seem hard, when things seem difficult. We don't stop going to the church. We don't stop coming to God and seeking his face. We don't stop being, we don't stop giving when just because we've lost something. We don't stop, but we are unchangeable in what God is, because he's in us. So we have to look at God wants us to be like him, always seeking him. We have to be like God and be, and, and, and give goodness, even as God has given to us. And I just want to. So I just want to admonish you to be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of Christ. And that's the goodness of God. God bless you. And again, I thank you for joining us here at Fountain of Life for Wednesday's Word.